hey guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make this beautiful v-stitch crochet fringe skirt this is an original design by me and i'm going to be teaching you how to do the step-by-step -step process um to make this beautiful skirt so as you can see in the image we have the finished design and later on in our next video we shall be learning how to make the matching top the written pattern is already available on all my online shops and you can find all the links in the description box below so let's get started all right so this design is inspired by my previous granny stitch crochet fringe skirt and if you haven't yet checked it out please make sure you check it out i'll be leaving its link in the description box below as well as on the screen so that after this you can go check out that design as well for this project you will need a measuring tip a pair of scissors, a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, and the yarn that I will use for this project is Winter King. It's a medium weight four ply acrylic yarn. And this is the result that I got from that. So I needed about four balls of 150 yards, and that brought me to about 600 yards total for the whole skirt to be made. So let's jump right into the video. So you're going to grab your hook and your yarn. And this is a size three yarn, by the way. People usually ask for the size of yarn. This is a size three DK weight yarn. So you're going to start off with a magic ring. You're going to wrap your yarn around two fingers like this. Insert your hook, grab the working yarn like that and then hold remove your fingers and you're going to make a chain of one just to close off the magic ring and then you're going to make a chain of four one two three and four which counts as a double crochet chain one and then you're going to yarn over insert your hook into the magic ring pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two and that is a double crochet in the US terms. So I had mentioned before that the chain of four counts as a double crochet chain one. So, so far we have this double crochet, a chain one, and another double crochet. So we want a total of seven double crochets separated by chain one spaces. So we have this one, a chain one space. This is the second one, make a chain one. This is the third one chain one fourth chain one fifth chain one sixth chain one and this is the seventh once you place your seventh double crochet you're going to pull on the magic ring to close it up completely just pull on it and close it off so we have a total of seven double crochets separated by chain one spaces, as you can see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And each double crochet is separated by a chain one space. So let's go on to row two. So for row two, you're going to start off with a chain of four. One, two, three, and four. After your chain of four, you're going to turn your work. And you're going to go into that very first chain one space which is this one and you're going to place one small v stitch a small v stitch is one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet into the same exact space so this is what you'll have then from here you're going to go into the next chain one space and you're going to place another small v stitch so one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet. So now we're going to create a big V stitch, but to do this, you're going to skip over the next double crochet, skip over the next chain one space, and you're going to yarn over, and you're going to go into the next double crochet with one double crochet, chain five, and one more double crochet into the same exact stitch. So this is our big V stitch, one double crochet chain five, one more double crochet. And then from here, you're going to skip over the next chain one space, 
skip over the next double crochet and you're going to go into the next chain one space with one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet and that is our small v stitch from here you're going to go into the very last space with one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet which is the small v stitch and then from here you're going to make a chain of one and one more double crochet into the same exact space so that marks the end of row two and you can see how flat the bottom edge of the triangle is so from here we're going on to row three row three starts with a chain of five one two three four and five turn your work you're going to skip over the next chain one space skip over the next double crochet and into the chain one space of the next v stitch which is here you're going to place one small v stitch just like that and then you're going to go into the next v stitch the next small v stitch with one small v stitch which is one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet now we're going to skip over two stitches as you can see here skip over those two double crochets and you're going to directly go into the chain five space and you're going to place five double crochets separated by chain one spaces so this is the first double crochet chain one two chain one three chain one four chain one and five once you have five double crochets separated by chain one spaces and you place your last double crochet you're going to skip over two stitches one two and into the next chain one space you're going to place one small v stitch just like that and then you're going to go into the next chain one space and you're going to place one small v stitch so if you're to notice every small v stitch receives a small v stitch then from here you're going to make chain of two after your chain of two you're going to skip over the next double crochet and skip one chain off the chain of four and you're going to place one double crochet into the next chain just like that so this marks the end of row three and this is what you should have now for row four we are going to start off with a chain of four one two three and four turn your work into the next chain to space you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet which is a small v stitch as you can see here then from here you're going to go into the next chain one space and place a small v stitch so you're going to repeat this all the way up until we, we reach the five double crochets that we placed in the chain five space so we are here these are the five double crochets that we placed so into the very first chain one space of the five double crochets you're going to place a small v stitch which is one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet just like that then from here you're going to skip the next double crochet skip the next chain one space and into the next double crochet you're going to place one double crochet chain five and one more double crochet into the same exact stitch this is going to create our big v stitch so our big v stitches are created on the even rows as you can see here on row two and row four then from here you're going to skip the next chain one space skip the next double crochet and into the next chain one space you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet just like that so this will create a small v stitch 
into the last chain one space of the five double crochets that we created in the big v-stitch as you can see here then from here you're going to go into the next chain one space and you're going to place one small v-stitch which is one double crochet chain one one double crochet then a small v-stitch into the next chain one space like that and then into the last chain five space you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet which counts as a small v-stitch and then you're going to make a chain of one and one more double crochet into the same space to end your row all right now we've balanced what we have at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row as you can see we started off with a chain of four and we've ended with a chain one one double crochet so this marks the end of row four row five is going to basically be something quite easy you're going to start off with a chain of five turn your work you're going to skip over the next chain one space skip over the next double crochet and into the chain the next chain one space you're going to place a small v stitch just like that and then you're going to go into the next chain one space with a small v stitch so continue to place small v stitches in each small v stitch and go all the way up until you have two stitches to the chain five space so this is what we have we have two stitches to the chain five space so you're going to directly go into the chain five space all right after the very first double crochet you're going to make a chain of one one double crochet into the same space chain one one double crochet into the same space chain one one double crochet into the same space chain one and one more double crochet into the same space so we've made a total of five double crochets into the same space the chain five space now once you place your fifth double crochet you're going to skip over two stitches and into the next chain one space you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet just like that so we've basically placed a small v-stitch here and then you're going to go into the next chain one space with a small v-stitch all the way down you're going to repeat this all the way down placing one small v-stitch in each small v-stitch until you place a v-stitch into the very last small v-stitch as you can see here then from here you're going to make a chain of two skip over the next double crochet skip one chain and one double crochet into the next chain to wind up your row so one thing that you have to make sure you do is to balance the number of v-stitches that you have on either side of the triangle as you can see here we have one two three four before the fun stitch that we create in the big v stitch so we have one two three and four so we should have the same exact number of small v stitches before we get to the fun stitch in the middle of the panel so i hope your panel is looking just like mine so we are going on to the next row which is row six Row 6 is basically going to be the same as row 4. So I'm going to demonstrate row 6 one more time. And then we shall be repeating rows 5 and 6. Or 4 and 5. I just want to remind you of what to do when it comes to the even rows. So for the even rows, you start off with a chain of 4. Which counts as a double crochet chain 1. Turn your work into the very first chain to space you're going to place a small v stitch which is one double crochet chain one one double crochet and then you're going to continue to place one small v stitch in each small v stitch
So repeat that until we get to the five double crochets that we placed in the chain five space. So we are we are here at this level. These are the five double crochets starting with this one. So you're going to skip over two stitches and into the very first chain one space of the five double crochets, you're going to place a small V stitch, which is one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. And then you're going to skip over the next double crochet, skip over the next chain one space and into the next stitch, which is this one. This is the exact middle of the panel. You're going to place one double crochet, chain five, and one more double crochet into the same exact stitch. So this will create our big V stitch. Remember I told you the big V stitches are created on the even rows. And since we are on row six, the big V stitch has surfaced. So after here, you're going to skip over the next chain one space, skip over the next double crochet and into the next chain one space, you're going to place a small V stitch which is one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. And then you're going to go all the way down, placing one small V stitch in each small V stitch until the end of the row, or until you place a small V stitch in the last small V stitch of the previous row. So this is my last small V stitch of the previous row and I'm placing a small V stitch there. Now we have a chain of five left here. We're going to go into it with one small V stitch, which is one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet. And then we're going to make a chain of one and one more double crochet into the same exact space. But you're going to just repeat rows five and six and keep working that. All right, guys, I continued to repeat rows five and six until the base of my triangle measured uh, my hip circumference when slightly stretched. As you can see here, we have about 35 inches without stretching. And when we stretch, we can go to 40 inches, which is my intended hip measurement. But then when fully stretched, it even goes up to 44, 45 inches. And you should end on a row that is odd, an odd row, the one that creates a fun stitch at the top here and starts and ends with a chain of five, starts with a chain of five and ends with chain two, one double crochet, the one that creates that very big space here. So that's the row that you should end on. And now we are going to start creating a flat edge on the sides of our panel so that we create coverage for the skirt. So to do that, you are going to, after your very last stitch here, you're going to make a chain of three, turn your work. When you turn your work, you're going to place only one double crochet into the very first V stitch. This time we are not going to go into this space. You're going to place one double crochet into the first V stitch, just like that. And then you're going to go into the next V stitch with a small V stitch. And then from here, the pattern is going to remain the same. All the way up where we shall create a big V stitch. And then I'll meet you back here towards the end of the row to show you how to wind up your row but everything else in the middle remains the same. The only difference is the beginning of the row and the end of the row. So we are going to just go ahead and create small V stitches in each small V stitches all the way up. And when we get to the top, since this is an even row, you're going to create a big V stitch here. Another thing that I forgot to mention was 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. I did a total of 27 rows to get to this point. So this is row 28 for me. So go all the way across, create the big V stitch here, just like we've been doing before. And I'll meet you back here to show you how to wind up the row. 
Right, so we are almost coming to the end of the row and you can see a placed a uh, big V-stitch in the middle of the panel and then we've come all the way from here to this side and I have placed a small V-stitch in the second last V-stitch as you can see here we have only one V-stitch left so after placing a small V-stitch in the second last V-stitch you're going to yarn over go into the last V-stitch of the previous row and you're going to place a double crochet there and then into this space, the chain of five, you're going to go in there with one double crochet to wind up your row. And you can see how the direction of the triangular shape is changing because now we are going flat. So you will place only one double crochet into the chain five space. And then from there, you're going to turn your work. Uh, you're going to make a chain of three turn your work this is going to be row 29 and this is an odd row so for this one what we are going to do is after chaining three and turning we are going to skip over the double crochet here skip over the next double crochet and go into the very first v stitch and we are going to place one v stitch so we've placed a small v stitch there so you just make a chain of three and go into the very first full v-stitch and place a v-stitch there a small v-stitch then you're going to go all the way up create a fun stitch just like we have for the the odd rows here at the top into the big v-stitch and then go all the way down and i'll meet you back towards the end of the row to show you how to wind up your row So you can see how the direction has changed. We are creating a flat edge on the sides of the triangle in order to create coverage for the skirt to make it more functional and wearable. So that's the reason for the change in the construction of the, of the design. guys we're coming to the end of the row and as you can see we've created the fun stitch at the middle top of the of the panel and then we've come towards the end and for this we are going to place you see this full v stitch because this is a standalone double crochet so we are not considering it for this row so this v stitch you're going to place a small v stitch into that v stitch just like that and you're going to skip over the next two stitches which is this one and the, the standalone double crochet and go into the chain of three that space and you're going to place a double crochet there so that marks the end of row 29 which is the old row so row 30 is going to be uh the even row so you're going to make a chain of three turn your work so after turning your work, you're going to go into the very first V-stitch and you're going to place one double crochet and then a small V-stitch into the next small V-stitch just like that and then you're going to continue all the way up placing one small V-stitch in each small V-stitch until you get to the top where you will create a big v-stitch just like we do for the even rows and then go all the way down and i'll meet you back at this point when uh we are winding up our even row or row 30.
all right guys we are coming to the end of the row and you can see i've created a i've created a big v-stitch at the top and i've continued all the way down and uh, I, we have two v-stitches left so in the second last one we shall place a small v-stitch just as usual and then into the last v-stitch we are going to place only one double crochet just like that and then you're going to skip the next double crochet and into the chain three space we're going to place a double crochet just like this to wind up our row so this is row 30 and for row 31 we are going to just repeat row 29 because these are now odd rows and even rows what you do for the odd rows is the same thing and what you do for the even rows is the same thing so let's see how to start row 31 you're going to make a chain of three and turn your work just like you did for row 29 you're going to skip over the next double crochet the standalone double crochet and then skip the next double crochet of the v-stitch and then into the chain one space of the full v-stitch you're going to place a v-stitch there place a small v-stitch there just like that that's how we start our row and then you're going to continue to place a small v-stitch in each small v-stitch just like that all the way up and when it comes to this part you place your five double crochets separated by chain one spaces and go all the way down and wind up the same exact way that you did for row 29 so at this point we are repeating row 29 and 30 until we get a good length around here from the base of the triangle all the way to the full coverage of the behind of the butt area so uh, i'm going to keep repeating rows 29 and 30 alternating between them until i get a good length here and i'll be back to show you what my work looks like the middle section of the panel is going to keep growing because we work all the way across to this side so that means the length in the middle of the panel is going to keep increasing and increasing until we get the good coverage for the side area because we don't want our behind to be out so this is going to the length uh, the way to determine this is from your waistline all the way to below your butt so measure that length and that should be the length here from the base of the triangle all the way to here so you're going to keep growing this length until that length that i've talked about and then i'll meet you back at that point and show you what to do next all right guys so i ended up doing a total of 15 rows of leveling up the side of the panel and i have folded it over like this uh remember our triangular panel was like this then we started leveling up the sides to make them flat and this is what everything looks like when it comes to the base of the skirt we have a slanting edge and you can see this in our previous granny stitch fringe skirt that you guys so loved so much so this is a piece inspired by that piece and from here i'll recommend a number of rows depending on the sizes that you're making for and uh, for me this is 15 rows for size medium then uh you're going to fold over your work so that we can join the flat edge on the side of the skirt so you're going to make a chain of one and i ended on an odd row but you can end on any row of your choice it can be an even row or an odd row as long as you get enough coverage for your skirt so from here you're going to make two single crochets in each and every row on the side of the panel so we are joining up the sides of the flat edge that we just created on the sides of the triangular panel and you're placing two single crochets in each and every row all the way up to the top section of the skirt all 
all right so we are reaching the top section and i'm placing my very last two single crochets into the last row at the top because this is the top of the skirt where we've now created a round something like this so the side where you've worked the single crochet row is the wrong side of the skirt because it's going to create a bump of single crochet stitches and when we turn it onto the right side we won't be seeing that bump so this is going to end up being the right side of our skirt so this is the wrong side of the skirt the one with the single crochet bump because you'll be seeing it like this it will be showing so from here we're going to go onto the waistband of the skirt and at this point you can decide to turn your work onto the right side just flip it over like this and then work on the right side of your work and this is what you're going to have and then a pointed part on one of the sides of the skirts so from here you're going to make a chain of three and you're going to go into each and every row with two single crochet two double crochets sorry two double crochets in each and every row all the way around okay so continue to double crochet two times in each and every row all the way around the waistband of the skirt So this is what you're going to have continue all the way around until you make it back to this point so we are going all the way around the opening the top opening of the skirt so that we create a waistband all right guys so we've made it all the way around the top opening of the skirt as you can see and we've been placing two double crochets in each and every row of the skirt and from here once you place two double crochets into the last row you're going to go into the top of the very first chain three of the row and you're going to place a slip stitch just like that now we're going to start creating the ribbing of our waistband and to do that you're going to make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet and then you're going to yarn over and then front post double crochet into the next double crochet and then back post double crochet into the next double crochet so we are alternating between front post and back post double crochet so this is front post and then back post the front post double crochet will push the double crochet to the front as you can see and we shall start creating a rib effect and the back post pushes the stitch to the back as you can see these ones that are disappearing to the back so let me demonstrate one more time front post you yarn over go around the post of the double crochet push it to the front and then double crochet as usual and then for the back post you're going to yarn over go behind the stitch push it to the back and then you double crochet as usual so that is a back post double crochet you're going to keep alternating between these two stitches all the way around until you make it back to the beginning of the round here all right so we've made it all the way around for round two of the waistband ribbing and i'm still placing front post and back post and i've ended with a back post double crochet it doesn't matter what you end with if it's a front post double crochet just place it and then into the very first chain three of the round you're going to insert your hook into the top of the chain three and place a slip stitch to wind up your round now we are going to place we're going to um make our very, very last round of the ribbing of the skirt 
and to do that you're going to make a chain of three and we are basically going to do the same exact thing the only difference is this time we already know where the front post double crochets are and where the back post double crochets are so what you're going to do for this round you're going to place a front post double crochet in each front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet in each back post double crochet just like that and the fact that for the previous round we've been alternating between the two we know exactly where to place what if you find a back post double crochet just place a back post double crochet and if you find a front post double crochet place a front post double crochet all the way around until the end of the round this is going to maintain the ribbing as you can see here the ribbing of the skirt to be in one straight line so go all the way around and i'll meet you back towards the end of the round this is the very final round of the skirt ribbing of the waistband All right, guys, so I've made it all the way around the third round of the waistband and I'm going to slip stitch into the very first chain three of the round. And this is how the waistband looks like. You can see the ribbed effect that has been created. And then from here, you're going to make a chain of one and cut your yarn. I just had to break it. I don't know where my pair of scissors is, but yeah this is what everything looks like this is the slant that we've created on one side of the skirt and then this is the pointed tip of the skirt so when you come to the upper part we have the waistband of the skirt now we are going to make a long chain of about 150 chains so just make a slip knot and then make your chain of around 150 to 200 chains this is just a simple chain as you can see here nothing complicated just keep chaining until you have around 200 chains all right now i have a total of 200 chains and i'm going to weave it into the second row or round of the waistband so you're going to just place your work like this remember this seam line is on the side of the skirt so we're going to determine which side is the front or the back depending on which side you want your slit to be because this is the slit so for me it's going to be like this and i'm going to start from the exact middle of the skirt so somewhere around here and I'm going to start weaving in and out of every two stitches of the middle round of the waistband. So you can see what that is creating. It's creating an adjustable waistband. So go all the way around until you come back to the exact middle of the skirt. All right, so we've made it all the way around and this is going to make the skirt adjustable. As you can see here, you can always pull on this to make the fitting tighter or loosen it up to make the fitting loose. Now I'm going to just make a knot here and the only thing left is to weave in all your tails and let's see the final look of our beautiful skirt that we have just made uh another thing that you can do is to put fringes i will be showing you what the fringes look like at the end but you will just place fringes into each and every v-stitch 
at the edge the bottom edge of the skirt and for this i will use a lighter yarn something much lighter so that it is more flowy um as opposed to this yarn this yarn is quite thick and heavy so i feel like it won't give me a very nice fringe so i will go for a lighter yarn uh, something more flowy but in the same exact shade and then i'll show you what everything looks like in the end all right guys i thought i had the cream color the same exact shade as this but it turns out i had yellow so i will be using the same exact uh the same exact yarn for the fringes because i don't want to buy a full packet of yarn just for fringes so i decided to cut um I, de I decided to cut strings of yarn of about 14 inches and i'm going to be placing the fringes as you'll see in the video so let me start placing the fringes into each v stitch so i'm going to be holding two strands at a go and i place them in each and every v stitch just like that so all the way down. <laughs> 